All right. So let us tease out the story. And before we move to our next interview, let's take you back to the screen, uh, back to the scene, and just share uh, some of the visuals of what is happening in this moment. As sun begins to set, a number of families still tonight looking for their loved ones and uh, directing those with inquiries, wanting to know whether their family members are either in the mortuary or being facilitated in one of the hospitals around the province. Uh, 0800 203 is one of the numbers that have been given out as the city sets up its call desk. I'll repeat the number, but we'll definitely project it for you on the screen. 0800 203 well, let's, again, talk about the context in which this tragedy has happened. And Mary Gillard de Klerk is the coordinator of the Johannesburg Homeless uh, Network, and she joins us now. Mary, thank you very much for being with us tonight. Um, you know, as we mentioned at the beginning, a nation certainly in mourning. This is really such a terrible, terrible tragedy. So many lives lost. And to hear the number of children that are amongst those who, who died so tragically is certainly heartbreaking. As you watch the story unfold, what were some of the things that were going through your mind? Firstly, our condolences to the families who've lost loved ones. It's an absolute tragedy, but sadly it's an accident that has been waiting to happen for ages. We have a housing crisis in the city of Johannesburg. And yes, if people get evicted, the city has to provide alternative accommodation. Now there are very, very, very few um, uh, shelters in the city of Johannesburg. There are no shelters for families and homelessness is a rising problem. Um, we need many more shelters and we don't have even any safe spaces at all in the city of Johannesburg. So when people come to Johannesburg, they then fall victim to these unscrupulous forms of accommodation and people are basically held to ransom um, because if they want to leave that uh, accommodation, the unscrupulous hijack hijackers of those buildings won't allow them to leave. So... Um, it's a catch-22 situation for many people, and we need a, a huge amount of afford, really affordable housing that is properly run in the city of Johannesburg. Mary, if you will just bear with me for a second. As you know, when a story is breaking and developing, there are a lot of moving parts. I'm going to ask you to stay with me. Let's go back then to this really important conversation we were having with uh, Mary Gillett de Klerk, who is the coordinator of the Johannesburg Homelessness uh, Net Network. You heard the Premier there uh, being asked a question about alternative arrangements, and he mentioned a couple of places. But as you were saying before we went to him, this problem of people not having shelter is endemic. What kind of numbers are we talking about, Mary, of people who are shelterless? Um, well, there, there haven't been proper stats done on um, the numbers of homeless in the city of Johannesburg, but the provincial government did a rough estimate of upwards of 20,000. And um, this is huge because uh, we really don't have any of these um, proper shelters, etc. Now, we don't have any shelters for families either. And, but luckily, uh, there is hope on the horizon. The NGOs have been working with the, and the Johannesburg Homelessness Network has been working together with um, the Gauteng Department of Social Development, uh, which finally um, developed the first policy on homelessness in, uh, in the country. So therefore, there is a dedicated budget to put aside to establish such uh, shelters and overnight safe spaces. And we need also transitional accommodation for people who found work but can't afford to pay uh, proper, um, you know, pay pay rent. We don't have enough affordable accommodation or really affordable accommodation in the city of Joburg. It's an, it's just d despairing, um, really, when you look at the situation. And yeah. yes, tr NGOs do try and lease buildings from the city of Johannesburg like that NGO tried to do. But it, we need a proper partnership with all levels of government working together. And if, it, if there was a proper partnership, we wouldn't have had this problem in the first place.
because people would um, there wouldn't have been the, the, the opportunity for the, that building to be hijacked. It was an issue that was, I, I think, diluted in the news conference we just heard now about the relationship of NGOs uh, in this space to the, you know, the concept and the action of eviction. And in earlier reports, you might have seen, uh, Mary, you know, some criticism leveled at NGOs, um, you know, in, in terms of ev evictions. And it, it's been cited as, you know, p being part of causing the problem to be perpetuated. And I would really love, speaking of the partnerships that you've just been sharing, talking about the work that's been done, what would your response be to people who have that point of view? The fact is, is that NGOs would like to, yeah, you know, we need the hardware like the um, like buildings, but we also need to work on a partnership that's real with the city. With the city, now unfortunately, the city's policy is rather outdated. It only deals with shelters. Uh, we it needs to to become more in step with the Gauteng policy on social development. We don't even have a national policy uh, on homelessness in the country, and this is really an indictment of our society. And we from the National Homeless Network have been trying to get this, the National Department to actually help craft one because only with a policy can it be properly funded. And then we can actually establish together these various resources, which you need a chain of resources from drop-in day centers across the city. City needs to provide ablutions on a 24-hour basis. There are very few of those across the city. We need um, overnight safe spaces where people feel safe. And I don't mean the, the kind of ones offered by other municip another municipality in the, in the country, which, um, you know, tries to do it on a large scale. We need many more of these across the city, across yeah. city, we are the, all of the suburbs, because homelessness is not just only in the CBV, it's across the, the, all of the suburbs of Johannesburg. And the homeless are here to stay. And, you know, because we don't have sufficient work, we have an unemployment crisis in this country. And we and people come to the, the big cities like Johannesburg in search of work um, because they've been offered something and it doesn't materialize. Then they land up on the streets and then they land up falling victim to these unscrupulous forms of accommodation. Well, what would you say comes out of, uh, and this is an unmitigated tragedy, again, just the pictures yes. of those children run through your mind. You think about the overfilled mortuaries right now where, you know, pathologists are busy Great. at work. It's, it, it's, it's really just a horrendous evening. How would you say this can be a moment that might galvanize the city to take up some of these opportunities to work more cohesively and constructively with uh, the, some of the organizations you mentioned? I think we need an urgent summit on homelessness and um, on the housing crisis. And they need to work together with us and not try and do everything themselves. You know, the thing is that the, the city um, now wants to establish shelters of its own, but why don't they work together with the NGOs um, who are working in the space, have been working in the space for many years, who have the experience, and actually we all sit down and we collaborate and we have a collaborative effort to address this matter. Thank you so much for talking to us. That was uh, Mary Gillard de Klerk, who's the coordinator of the Johannesburg Homelessness Network.